Welcome back. In the last video, we drilled down into an individual machine. In this video, we'll pick up where the last one left off and drill into an individual transaction and the requests that make it up. You'll recall that a transaction is a subset of an application because the transaction only uses some of the servers in the application environment. Likewise, a trace, which is one instance of the transaction, includes a subset of the components in the map, usually one server out of every tier. For each of these components, there's a different view in FactFinder. There's the Application Explorer, the Transaction Explorer, and the Trace Explorer, which we'll be looking at in this video. To get to a Trace Explorer, you can start in two places, either here in the top transactions view or in the Transaction Explorer. If trace data is available for a transaction, you'll see a magnifying glass in the View Traces column. Click on that and you get a pop-up showing all the available traces for that transaction. Each of these represents an individual user's transaction. You can see when it started, how long it took, any result codes, and who the client was. If I double click on one of these traces, I'm taken to the Trace Explorer view. First, let me show you the other way to get to a Trace Explorer. Open up a Transaction Explorer for the transaction you're interested in. Navigate to the bottom panel and click the Traces button. This will load all the trace data that FactFinder has collected in this environment. Just like before, you can see each of the individual traces and double click on them to go to a Trace Explorer window. Before we do that, let me explain how FactFinder gathers this trace information. There are two ways. The first is called Auto Trace. Auto Trace will automatically capture trace information about a transaction if that transaction is slow, meaning it exceeded an average response time threshold, or that transaction had an error. The other way to gather information about traces is to manually start a trace session. If you're not seeing trace data when you navigate to this view in FactFinder, that means none of your transactions have exceeded the threshold or had an error, so you'll need to start a manual trace session. First, you'll need to be in live mode. Click on the magnifying glass in the top left of the map to open up the Gather Traces on Machines dialog. In this dialog, you can start gathering traces on each of the machines in this environment for the duration that you set here in the middle. Since I already had trace data available for this login transaction, I previously opened up a Trace Explorer. Let me show you that now. As I mentioned earlier, you'll notice that there are fewer components in this map than there were in the Transaction Explorer that we just left. Because we're looking at one instance of this transaction, you can see the information that we saw in the trace window. It's start time, it's response time, the client, and any result codes over on the left. FactFinder's ability to trace this transaction across each of these tiers is powered by a technology called Transaction Link. You'll notice that there are scalar values beneath each application component in the map. That's because Transaction Link allows us to represent how much time was spent executing within each of these servers. That's the number that you see here. The other thing you'll notice is that that value for the WebSphere machine is in red. That's a feature that we call automatic bottleneck detection that points out that this machine represents more than 50% of the total response time of the transaction. At the bottom of this window, you'll see a tree view of the execution of this transaction across each of these servers. By following top to bottom, you can see exactly how this transaction executed. It started with a web request, then made a short request to the LDAP server, another request to the DNS server, and then a SOAP request out to the WebSer machine. From there, the WebSer machine called the SQL server, and then it called the MQ server, which called the CICS system on the back. By looking at the timeline column, you can see a visual representation of how much time was spent waiting on each of these requests. You can see right away that most of the time was spent waiting on that WebSer machine, just like the automatic bottleneck detection showed us. For each of these requests to each of these servers, Transaction Link not only allows us to calculate how much time was spent executing within the server, what we call think time, but also how much time was spent crossing the network. In the last video, when we were drilling down into an individual machine, I mentioned that you could see how it participates in transactions. Let's go into more detail about that. For any of these machines, and I'll pick the WebSer machine, if you go into a full details view, you'll see tabs for each of the transaction protocols that this machine is participating in. In this case, you can see SOAP served, SQL sent, and MQ sent. This is a good time to explain the difference between sent versus served. 
If a transaction is being served, that means this machine, the WAS SOL4 machine, is serving that transaction to clients. If a transaction protocol is being sent, that means this server is sending that transaction to a server that it depends on. Let's start with the SQL tab. In this tab, you'll see performance information for every SQL statement this machine has requested. If FactFinder has collected trace data about any of these SQL statements, you'll see the blue View Trace Data button appear in the cell. If I click on that button, you'll see a table view of all the instances of that SQL statement. Thanks for watching this video on managing transactions with FactFinder. In the next video, you'll learn how to use FactFinder as a full monitoring platform to keep track of your service levels.